Now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and um, welcome, everyone. Uh, and I'm gonna, just going to wait so that the room fills up. This is this is actually the best um, registered or attended webinar we've we've ever had, which says quite a lot, I think, um, in terms of the interest in wall coverings and design. So um, this is all really positive, and we've got 44 people in so far. Um, Really good panel, uh, minus one at the moment. Um, Robin Sprong is in the Isle of Skye in northern Scotland and experiencing adverse weather. And I don't think they have super, oh, well, I don't know, but I wouldn't imagine they have super fast broadband up there. But um, he's going to endeavour to try. But f but usefully, Terry and Vincent have both worked a lot with Robin. So they'll be able to talk a little about him and his business if he's not able to get online. Um, also, We've noted that um, unusually the weather in um, the south of England is, is clearly a bit better than it is in Barcelona at the moment, where Terry is, because they're having lots of storms and so on. So if there's some background noise, that's, that's, that's not Terry, that's, um, that's Barcelona. So um, I think it's, it's actually past. past oh, it's past. Is it? Okay, I thought yeah, I just... Hopefully. Okay, good. That's a relief. It's probably making its way up here, I imagine. So um, Tropical, tropical here we go. Yeah, exactly. All, all good fun. So... Um, Pure Digital, our first webinar, um, we're addressing a, a key area, I think is a really exciting area, wall coverings. Um, and which I guess the headline really is, is, th is this the next revolution for, for digital printing? And as I've said, I've assembled a really good panel of people that have good insight, different expertise, both from technology side, but also from, um, from actually the design side and the trends side. So um, we're going to work through the whole thing. What I've done also is I sent an email out saying anybody here that's attending this webinar has any questions, let me know. And, and what I've done is I've taken all of those questions. So hopefully I have time to individually go through them at the end, um, some of which I imagine will be addressed throughout the content anyway. So, so I'm just going to start now. Um, this is a pure digital webinar and pure digital is a new event that's happening in um, Amsterdam in April. It's the digital print event for the creative industry. We launched this event large for two reasons. I guess a lot of people were saying, at, I guess this may be the business case, a lot of people at exhibitions, traditional exhibitions, perhaps like FESPA and this one saying they're great shows, but we don't meet anybody new and we, we really think we need to to be meeting new people in, in the market interested in digital print in order to grow demand and so on. So we thought, okay, that's interesting. Maybe there's a need for a new event. Um, and then a lot of um, uh, feedback we got was that, um, that still, and actually surprised me, but still, generally speaking, digital print represents less than 3% of all print. <coughs> still doesn't sound very big, which means there's a lot of scope and opportunity for growth, but we start to think, why is that? Why is it that digital print represents less than that? I think within the creative industry, perhaps print compared with other media is perceived as a little bit slow, old and functional. Um, not quite as dynamic as perhaps digital media and, and the, the huge amount of interest and activity going on there. But we want to change that perception because we know that digital print is fast, it's flexible, it's creative and relevant. So that's a kind of key, a, a key aim we, uh, and target for the show is to change perceptions, to inspire um, designers. Because as Conran said, you know, a designer cannot truly claim to design something until they also know how it will be made. There goes Barcelona, I think. Um, so if it, this this event really is a, um, a a showpiece for the the potential of digital print for the creative industry because we know from the research from talking to creatives and designers is that they want new ideas really to fire their own imaginations and inspire their own customers. So there's a real cause to help grow the digital print market and put on event an event that inspires them, shows the possibilities, and so on. So that's the end of the kind of little pure digital thing. Before I introduce Rachel, the pace of change, I think, in the consumer world is just accelerating. A conference I was at this week, very technical conference usually, a lot of people were talking not so much about technical development now. They're talking about of inkjet or of digital print. It's about the challenge of changing perceptions and cultures and communication because the consumer world is changing really to align with the possibilities that digital can give it, whether 
that's for short run, whether that's for customized products. Um, and really, the, I think the power's shifted away from perhaps the establishment back, uh, back into the hands of the user or the consumer. And the consumer wants relevant stuff, fast, local, um, and so on and so forth. So it's really pointing to digital print. So really exciting and really, really strong opportunity there. But I think um, perhaps, and part of the reason we launched the show is there's still an information gap between the possibilities and the realities. So at this point, I'm gonna hand over to Rachel, who's, who's going to um, provide us with some, some of the trends out there in terms of decor and so on. Um, so Rachel, I'm just handing you the um, presentation Sure. Facility, right. so, if you want to call it. There you go. Yeah. So it, real quick, um, as my screen kind of changes over to my presentation, um, I've been in digital print for about five years and started off in the uh, photography market and then transitioned over into um, decor. So I've worked a lot with um, manufacturers and resellers and um, end users and whatnot and designers. So this is kind of my take on what I've seen. Um, so we're just gonna kinda go right in. Um, this is a quote that I wanted to start with and it just was a, a colleague of mine that had mentioned this the other day in conversation. I think it's so true and it just kind of sets the tone and the stage for what's going on right now and it's a really exciting time. So, you know, we've talked about mass customization for a long time as Marcus has pointed out that, you know, the economies and in different industries have shifted towards this, but it's really happening now and this is what I think we're all here to talk about today. Um, and then again, to kind of set the tone for uh, home decor in general, it's, it's really a different shift because of the customization and just the consumer demands in general have changed over the past maybe 10 years or so. So I call it a me ink mindset. And what I mean by this is, you know, we're really taking advantage of better technology and the uh, consumer individualization. Um, people are more um, eclectic and to be more specific with that, uh, even the products that we're seeing in home decor, whether it's furniture or accessories or wall covering or textiles, um, it has more of an, um, let that pass <laughs> more of an artisanal kind of style so all of these kind of factors are are weighing in on this and we're really seeing a lot of um, evolution and development in this kind of market which is really exciting i visited a uh, local um, design showroom here in sarasota and just chatted with the designer about her experience with wall covering in general um, in terms of specifying wall covering in projects and uh, her opinion was, you know, in the, in the past 10 to 15 years, uh, wall embellishment or decorating, as you would call it, uh, went from faux painting and things like that into wall covering because uh, when the economy shifted, um, those craftsmen and, and that skill set kind of disappeared. And, you know, with wall covering and what she loves about it now today, it's much more contemporary. And when she goes on to a particular job site, she knows exactly what she's going to get. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, and that was something that I wanted to share as well. Um, Mm -hmm. So part of part of the rebirth that we've talked about, this is kind of an interesting uh, kind of fact that I, I saw in IT strategies report back in 2012. But um, again, it's, it's, you know, we talk about the uh, volume and the different you know, lengths of wall covering that's being produced. But I really think that what we're seeing here and what's trending, not just in the aesthetic and the design aspect, but really more so in the technology and the capability that it allows is that things have shifted from people wanting, uh, you know, long run ranges of wall covering that, you know, they're kind of confined to an assortment or a design kind of, you know, pieces, but now it's kind of shifted into more of the short run um, kind of lower volume demand. And short run could even mean, it could mean one-off jobs or it could even mean, you know, a short run could just be uh, prints for a hotel, you know, so it's still volume, but it's short run custom. So a little bit more in depth into some of the uh, advances in technology and what it's kind of allowing, you know, we're seeing different people talk about, you know, what they think and what they're predicting about the future. And um, I thought it was interesting that uh, over here, uh, we've talked about um, at the Wall Covering Association I attended last year, there was some feedback about advances in technology and that actually came from a traditional audience, so more the analog side, and they were really kind of honing in on the fact that digital is happening and it's moving. So there were some, you know, talks about 
what can this technology do with faster speeds and you know possible single pass technology in the future um, really increasing volume and you know obviously with digital that's kind of the biggest uh, competing factor is the volume from, for digital compared to the analog um, and there's other factors as well um, it's, uh, in the wall covering association we talked about um, the demand for clients wanting to customize wall covering for different purposes one being in the healthcare and hospitality um, promoting health and wellness, so sustainable products, um, customizing, you know, spaces, and that's all possible with digital. So we know wall covering has evolved. Um, that's it's pretty obvious. And, you know, I, I'm noticing a lot of um, lifestyle and kind of uh, lifestyle brands or furniture brands and different retailers launching their own ranges, I think is really interesting. And um, different applications. I mean, this is something I think is really interesting and unique. So things are more contemporary. They're more customized, um, you know, just better quality product in general, and obviously uh, much better application uh, install and removal. So not the uh, old wallpaper from years ago. Mm. This is something that uh, I think is really, it's so powerful. It's so important. I think that, um, you know, if, if anything, this is a fantastic piece of information just to keep in the back of your mind for anybody out there wanting to get into this. And um, I just call it art to object. I'm sure it's called different things, but it's just the process that uh, of being able to take content and design and it's digitized so it's easier and reproducing art and design and really whatever just completely opens the door. So, you know, there's a totally unlimited amount of, you know, design content that you can really create. So it really, um, you know, changes that whole process. Mm -hmm. So one example, uh, I've talked about her before. I love her work. Um, I, apparently she's a Scottish artist, so I just found that out. I didn't realize that, but I knew she was in the UK somewhere. And she uh, was just at Decorex, actually. I saw her, was following her. But she's a watercolor artist. So it, this is incredible. I mean, she's in her studio. She's painting. She's uh, taking that work. It's, you know, she's digitally trans transferring it to different uh, print applications, textiles, different things like that, but obviously wall covering. And, you know, she's created her own brand. So the the time to market has totally changed. Um, and the ability to be able to do this is, is just really, it's incredible. So it's just amazing that you can take, you know, a watercolor painting and you can turn it into almost anything. So I love this this part. and. Um, I thought that was really interesting. So, what, sorry, what's her name? Blue, Bluebell Gray is the brand, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, Bluebell Gray is a studio. I forgot her first name, but um, I love her. So that's a mm -hmm. great example. Yeah. Cool. So kind of going down into some of the specific trends I'm seeing, and I'm, I'll just go through this quickly. But again, finite reproduction, um, taking original art or pop art or appropriated art or anything like that and turning it into wall covering. I think this is kind of interesting. Um, large scale repeats, you know, this was not really possible before. And the designer that I spoke with that I mentioned earlier, um, she loves this part. You know, you can, you could take anything and you can, it's scalable. I mean, you can customize it. It's just, you know, it's unlimited. So this is really interesting too. Uh, maximalism. I think that, uh, it's kind of interesting. Now I know this is not everybody's taste, but there are designers that are going to push boundaries. So, uh, we've kind of gone from the minimalist kind of perspective now to maximalism, which is great because look at all the different print applications. So um, people are kind of pushing the limits. Um, Trompe so different kind of faux um, finishes or, you know, different content like that. So, you know, this wood paneling or uh, distressed wood and, you know, some of these have more haptic qualities. So they'll match some of these uh, designs to different kind of textures as well. Um, more trends, so pop art and botanicals and jungle prints and, um, things like that. I thought this was a really fantastic example. This is from Interior Design Magazine. It's a home out on the Hamptons and there are more wall covering applications in this house than that. So uh, this person really wanted to express, you know, their personal taste and thought that was kind of cool too. Mm. All right, so some of the modern advantages, just to kind of recap, mentioned the haptic qualities and textures. Um, better color matching, you know, people can launch and commercialize uh, products and, you know, custom lines faster to market. And it's really much more experiential, interactive, and I'll give you a couple of final examples. So content conversion, I've heard of uh, different printers with in-house design departments, and they have people that specialize in this. I don't know if this is kind of a universal concept, but um, there are 
I guess, specialists that take content and they'll say, you know, okay, great. So I've got this beautiful piece of artwork or this pattern or print surface design, you know, what can I do with it? So um, they're converting it to different applications. It could be textiles or wall covering. And um, it's, it's great because this is what digital can do, right? I mean, you can take <clears throat> A piece of content and you can transfer it to different applications and again this is kind of I think showing how home decor um, in general is kind of expanding um, the other thing that I wanted to point out which I think is really interesting is I think this whole industry and I think designers can see this too is um, it's it's very collaborative you know we're a little bit more transparent you know we're talking about collaborations we're <laughs> talking about things on social media mm -hmm. we're self-promoting and marketing so I love to see the synergy and I think this is a really important point of what you know digital can really do mm. um, again more collaborations and uh, this is not something new I mean we've seen uh, you know celebrities or icons you know co developing a product with a manufacturer, but there's more. I mean, we're seeing so many more people doing this from shoe designers and um, fashion designers to, you know, anybody kind of partnering up with people and making all these different kind of cool lines. And I found a couple of different things interesting uh, recently. So we've seen this with uh, conductive inks, uh, but now there's kind of, you know, people playing with wall carving, like what else can we do with it? How much, you know, how can we make this more dimensional and more experiential? And um, so this is kind of cool. This uh, designer in uh, France, he's uh, made it uh, interactive. So you touch the wallpaper and there's sound. And then this other example, they've used uh, the designs and the characters in the wall covering um, as targets for AR, VR applications. And uh, you put your iPad up to the target and it opens up a bedtime story for your child. So it's cool. interesting how people are kind of coming up with new ideas. Definitely. And this generally, all of these applications really wouldn't be possible with analog, right? Or No. No. I, I don't think so, no. No. And sorry, just while you're there and you mentioned wallpaper with the sound, one of the questions came through asking about acoustic wallpaper. I don't really know what that is. But I guess it means it has some tactile value or whatever. I don't know. Have you heard yes, yes. Before? So there are. There are, I have seen more, I'm actually at Neocon last year, um, I saw several companies and I've seen more and more um, acoustic type products, uh, either um, kind of felt with adhesive back on it, or even um, a PVC or some of the material, fibrous material maybe, with an NRC rating for acoustic applications. And um, I think that we're seeing that more and more as well because um, even in uh, commercial spaces, there's more, uh, branded spaces, you know, think of like a Google office or, a, mm -hmm. you know, the, the headquarters of Facebook or, you know, yeah. whatever, you know, there's these huge open concept spaces and um, they're all highly customized and branded. And um, with those kind of open concept spaces, there are more um, acoustic applications and products out there. Cool. And um, one of the questions, so afterwards, what we do, I'll probably ask you for a couple of different company names and then we can forward it on to the person who asked. Is that, is that okay? Rather sure. Than yeah brilliant Th thanks for that Rich. so what seems to come through you mentioned a thing there collaboration partly that clearly stuff inspiration comes from can come from social media and end up on a wall and on the way various people are collaborating to make that happen that seems to be a a key theme mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely uh, i think i think most of us will agree that um psps and manufacturers or mm. anybody on the more technical side you know without the content and the designer, we would have blank rolls of paper. So we need them. And it's, I think it's really critical to, you know, position yourself in the market um, mm. and to, you know, partner with the right person, mm. um, have the right quality um, and the visual cues that are really going to attract the audience that, you know, you're looking to, to connect with. So I think it's really critical. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that. That was awesome. Great start to the um, to the webinar. Thank you very much. And please stay with us if you can. And obviously you've dialed in from Sarasota, Florida. So thanks yes. for that. So you had the earliest start. Um, I'm now going to sort of just take back the presentation and just show some numbers because people also asked for um, a kind of up to date idea of market size. Um, Okay, go to, to to my presentation. Yeah, here's here's the question. Before I hand over to Vincent, how how big is the market and what is the growth potential and what global markets? This question here, this was from a survey we did for Imprint, um, our sister show, and we asked. Um, and before I, before I sent out this survey, it was 101 people responded, of which 
they were mainly technology developers, so people developing the technology. Um, so clearly understand where the, where things are selling and where they're not. Um, I assumed flooring, laminates and vinyls would be higher, would, would come out top. But actually what's clear is by, by some distance, wallpapers, pictures and so on and so forth came out higher and commercial or custom prints for commercial and retail environments came out really high in that. And the third one, custom prints for home decor over and above the other applications. So that's, that demonstrates something, I think. Um, also in terms of numbers, these numbers from uh, IT strategies show the wall coverings market. Um, sorry, here we go. So the growth potential there, there's, there's uh, and, and actually I think Terry and, and John can explain a bit more about the technology when they come to their bit, because um, there is obviously um, toner based technology for um, wall coverings, but also um, a big growth market area seems to be the latex, Wi format latex market, which um, Terry's going to talk about in any case to some extent, um, and the UV market. And John will talk a little bit about his new technology from Industrial Ink Jet, which isn't latex or UV. Um, so, there's what's clear though is that there's strong on these numbers, strong growth. Um, expectations from IT strategies who tend to, to, be, to err more on the side of caution as opposed to overhyping figures and I've worked with them for the last six years and I know that and they have that reputation within the market so these are positive numbers other people asked us a little bit um, about um, where wall coverings tends to be more popular in what regions um, middle one regionality of wall coverings Europe's obviously a very big market so I guess um, the European market likes wall coverings a little bit more than other other cultures, and I believe in the northern European area is even more wallpaper friendly than perhaps the southern European. I don't know if any of the panel would like to comment on this. You're welcome to join in, um, but I think that that kind of gives you a little bit of a ge geographical, and that may change, I guess, um, as the awareness of the possibilities come online a little bit more. But um, I will share the presentation with all the delegates in any case, so you can refer to it. Um, I changed the word from wallpaper to wall coverings, actually, because non-woven is clearly a growing area as well within um, within digital wall coverings. It's not just all paper. OK, so one of the things that um, Rachel finished on there was talking about um, designers and the importance that they have in the whole mix, of course. Um, and what I'm going to now do is hand over to a gentleman named Vincent van Herk, who's currently waiting for the control. Um, it looks like he's in, I don't know, a top floor apartment in New York, but really he's in Eindhoven. There we are. And um, Vincent, I'll let you introduce yourself, but you, you're very much involved in wall coverings and digital printing. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm been, uh, I am into digital printing signage mm. for about maybe even more than 16 years now. And since I think it was 2010 that I made like a real bigger step into adding more and more design to the project. Mm. And we find out, we found out that the project get more value by that. So instead of doing like square meters in printed materials, you can add value by adding design or a story in some kind of way. So um, uh, we talked about it before, and uh, um, we heard some things about this uh, before from uh, from Rachel. Um, I want to show you an example. Can you see the image on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Does it work? Yeah. Can see. Um, like Rachel told before about the um, water coloring, this is a project we did um, by inspire the designer it's like a dutch design deal it's called they are called kiki and yoast uh, they're based in eindhoven actually they work all over the world for uh big fashion brands fashion houses like hermes and um, what they did in this project for hermes kiki is the one who does these things like water, water coloring like rachel said before and we came up with the idea about why do, don't we use these in the uh, uh in, Printed in some kind of way, so she came up with the idea of uh, getting them ready for shopping windows. So she created shopping windows with all her acrylic watercolor paintings, her design. Mm -hmm. So these came up. We did 
back covers, we did uh, floorings, uh, all these um, products in there, all printed. And it was picked up. It was brought to all other countries where Hermes is really busy, like these in uh, uh, Dubai Mall. So what happens next, and I'm showing you this because like just a few inspiring moments can lead to a lot of uh, projects who come after. After that, what you found out is it's, well, it's not easy. You need to do a lot about it, but um, uh, it's manageable. You can do new projects. And then she came up with this project. It's like an exposition of her new collection. You see the collection in there. It's mm -hmm. like some furniture and uh, um, uh, well, other design objects. Um, this is a show in uh, Design Basel, Miami. Um, and what she did, she translated her aquarelic paintings to create this scenography. It's like a tent, actually, a Bedouin tent. After that, we got thought, and we said, why don't we use these as wall covering? And she was into a project with the Dutch National Rijks Museum, the famous Rembrandt uh, house, everybody knows the Night Watch. And then we came up, we, we did all the uh, uh, rooms of the, uh, well, there's a, a, a wing in the Rijks Museum. It's got 10 big rooms and every room, every wall was decorated with her design. Looks really, looks really amazing, yeah. So what you end up with is like, she's dreaming a thing, she's creating a thing, and then you walk up into her creative, uh, uh, well, head in some kind of way. Yeah. And uh, the Reich's Museum picked it up. Um, we did a great project in there. And after that, the new projects came up. So when, in other expositions, they came up. This is a project called Catwalk. And you see this really big dress from the, I believe it was the 17th century. And the broderie on the dress has been translated into wall covering in this way. So all rooms were created in this wall covering. So mm -hmm. um, my story is actually about using a design to get into this revolution. Right? The mm -hmm. title was The Digital Re Revolution. Mm -hmm. um, I think by adding value, by adding the designer on your table to create new values, I think that's the way to, uh, um, well, to shape the future of, uh, of wall covering. So yes, yeah, so and what you've mentioned there, look, finished on there, new value. I like two things. I like, I really like the journey that the ex, the supporting role that the digital wall covering does in that, like you say, is to pick up the picked up the pattern on the dress and take and made the whole thing thematic, but not detracting from the main displays either. It's adding, yeah, it's adding. It's like a scenography. It's like a background. Yeah, yeah. and it makes like the collection stronger. Mm. And I think that's the same like the examples Rachel uh, showed us. In the mm. early days, you get like this design furniture, which made the, well, the look and feel of the uh, of the room. And now you got the wall covering, mm. who is really, which is really important to create the look and feel of the room. And not only in house or in offices, but we do a lot of um, projects in healthcare. Mm. And um, what kind I think of one of the questions, mm. Sorry? What kind of projects are the healthcare ones? Are they It's like or? projects to like create like an, a, a patient's hmm. uh, experience, oh, often okay. down the clinical experience. Hmm. And, um, and and in that point, there comes another, um, I think, very welcome thing is that you can add value hmm. with the design because um, uh, I, mean, I think I mentioned it the last time we spoke, uh, Marcus, hmm. um, uh, like a project we did in a, uh, an institution for people with uh, geriatric as mm. like dementia yeah. and in their nature with this disease, they have like the, 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 the inside need to flee, to get out of the rooms because right. they see great doors as holes and they got the A scary uh, environment the need, yeah. Mm. Yeah, to get out. And when you add like the design on the door, for example, like bookshelves with books, they stay mm -hmm. in the room. Yeah, that's interesting. So the design is like the bookshelves. And mm. then what's the value? The value is maybe uh, 500 euros for a print, but the value of uh, one nurse less in the room to take care of all the people, mm. what's the value? What's the value in that? And mm. I think mm. that's the next step you need to do as well. Mm. Not only get the, the best machines, you get your designs ready, but also think about 
new ways of um, yeah enhancing enhancing um, environments that will you know benefit health. I mean that's that's a that's a great uh, that's a great thing to do that um, digital can provide that I think perhaps you wouldn't even expect. So that's that's a that's a great example. So you you work yourself. You're a, you kind of work with printing companies and with designers. Is that right? Yeah, well, not only it, yeah. it's not only printing companies. Um, uh, I really like the projects I do with the companies who are print related. Yes. But I also do a lot of projects with other companies. Um, mm. um, to uh, like uh, do a matchmaking with the designer to yeah. create new values to get them yeah, yeah, yeah. well shaped for the future. I think in my belief is like if a, uh, an organization wants to be relevant in uh, the next five years, they need to add the designer on their table mm. now. Yeah. The future is now is what someone told me last week. Mm. And I think that's it. You need them now. Yeah. So actually, it, it, because that gap between once designer understands, they can design effectively, can't they? Um, and really exploit yeah, the value of digital. Mm. Yeah, for me, design is not just the shape of the, uh, for example, the uh, walls I just showed you. But for me, a designer is more like a creative thinker. Mm. So they can think with uh, processes or products or uh, yeah. uh, the things I just um, try to explain with uh, how we, can we create mm. like a solution to get the people in this uh, room who are mentally mm. um, not okay. Um, how, how can we help? How can yeah. we help them? Yeah, no, it's great. And one, and I think that once the designer knows the possibilities, for instance, I hear people tell me that some designers still design for digital with repeats in them, with the pattern yeah. repeated. And they need to know. because it's the analog way of doing things, it's kind of saying, actually, a key value is if you do yeah. have the design right and the software right, there's no no need for repeats, things like yeah. that, really. Um, and width yeah. sizes and everything else. So, yeah, that that's awesome. Thanks for that. Um, Vincent and obviously we're going to come into the questions later which I'm sure you'll contribute some of the answers to and I want to now um, move from Eindhoven over to Barcelona uh, and I'm going to take back well actually I'm going to give it directly to to Terry in Barcelona um, you should be getting the uh, hopefully yep yeah, yep yeah, here you are Thank you very much. Okay, let me see if I share this. Yeah. And Terry, Terry, you can introduce yourself as well, but obviously you've been quite involved with the, uh, I think you've worked with Vincent before and also you've worked with Robin, haven't you? So over to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Well, my official title is uh, Business Development Manager for Printed Decoration. Um, it started with, with wall coverings, actually, because at the time we knew very little in terms of what directions we could go into. Uh, and wall covering sounded like the, the obvious area to go. But since then, we've actually um, diversified or grown into other, other areas as well, which is one of the, the benefits of, of uh, particularly our technology, latex technology, it's, 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 uh, its applicability for many, many different kinds of, uh, of uh, surfaces. Mm. But I'd like to keep this, this discussion more about all, okay. all technologies and not just, not just uh, latex. Okay. Um, if all, all digital technologies. Mm -hmm. So here you see, Robin is not here. This is, uh, I've taken the liberty of showing some of Robin's designs here in yeah. the background. Uh, yeah. um, this is one of the agencies that he works with called Soil. Um, actually, on the next slide, you will see, uh, Marcus, you're familiar with this. This is the last event we did here in, yeah. in the HP office um, mm -hmm. with, uh, with some customers, where we actually took a, a very boring meeting room and completely com Decked it out with uh, with de decorative uh, elements. So you see in the background the wallpaper. Of course, all of this is uh, Robin Sprong designs. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, you hear the word the, the name Robin Sprong um, left and right. How did this come about? Purely by chance. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I met him exactly five years ago in Dubai. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I met his wife first, and one thing led to another. I called him. We had an hour of discussion on on the telephone. And we decided that we'd uh, we'd collaborate. So, in in uh, in Rachel's words, collaboration here is very important because if the design is not good, the rest falls down. So I'd say design is probably seventy percent of or eighty percent of the story. If the design's good, you're 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 almost there. Mm -hmm. So here you see uh, flooring, you see wall covering, you see uh, fake leather in the in the on on the sofa, polyurethane. Uh, you see uh, 
um, adhesives on the table. You see adhesives on the cabinet there in the background on the, on the right. You see canvas prints uh, on the lampshade. You see fake leather again hanging there in the, on the jacket, the very colorful jacket hanging there in the background. Uh, once again, polyurethane on the on the, the bean bags. So and this goes on and on and on. We can we can we can basically decorate just about anything. To, mm. to Rachel's words, this is this has really become uh, a multi-surface thing as 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 opposed to just wallpaper. Moving swiftly into something that I I see more and more, and again to, to Rachel's words, uh, opening words earlier, uh, there's some mega trends going on right now, which are transforming, and this. Marcus, I think in the show that you're that, that you're preparing for next year, it's going to be the most exciting thing about that. I think is you've created several um, uh, interiors, whether it's you've gone pure home, pure digital, pure um, pure um, retail, uh, hospitality, yeah. retail, etc. Mm. And all of these areas are being driven or being led uh, by mega trends. If you look at this hotel, by the way, it's another Robin Sprung design here. Mm. Um, this is basically a hotel in Cape Town. Um, who was wanting to do something with French paneling? French paneling is is a very old um, decorative technique, which is which is wood basically. It was used to to um, camouflage ugly walls, but actually more than camouflaging, it's actually um, uh, insulating very cold, thick walls, uh, stone walls with wood. So, and the wood was actually carved by hand. Trying to get French, real French, French paneling is one very difficult and two extremely expensive. So here you have a, a great example, as Rachel mentioned, of, of, of trompe l'oeil, which is creating something that is not really but looks like the real thing. Mm. Uh, so in this case, French paneling. There's not much color involved; it's black and white, That's but it, uh, it, uh, it it really yeah really blends in quite quite well with the, the 60s look on the on the on the chairs there versus something much older in the background on the right there. Yeah, yeah. Looks really so cool. it's, it's all mix and match, and it can be it can be done with uh, with uh, digital retail. This is probably not a good example of your average retail. I don't <laughs> tend to shop here. In fact, I never shop here. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but you could you could apply this to any kind of clothing store in the high street, etc. They're all struggling with the mega trend of online, right? So how do we mm. how do we fight against Amazon? So interiors in in retail are are having to change by force and hmm. scrambling to change actually to, to, to change their stores so quick isn't it from change very quick very yeah. quick and changing from places where you have to go hmm. to a place where you actually want to go so the interior and the experience in, in who likes shopping let's uh, be honest exactly all right. um, i happen i happen to like it um oh vincent does as well right. okay all right then you happen to like it yeah Okay. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. It's a, maybe it's a Dutch. Vincent and I are both Dutch. So maybe it's a Dutch thing. Um, <laughs> uh, here, actually, you see very, very customized. In fact, uh, George Armani was involved uh, directly with this wallpaper. He wanted something that goes well with uh, the Armani color scheme, which is very earthy colors. And he wanted something that actually goes not just uh, into earthy colors, but something that actually looks like a stone quarry. So the wallpaper is actually installed horizontally, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Again, only this can only be done with digital. There's hardly any stock in that store, which goes endorses what you've just exactly. said about online. There's hardly anything there, so it's about the experience, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's experience. You know, I've mm. been to the Armani store or whatever. Mm. This is maybe a more banal example of uh, of a restaurant. Um, for those of you who frequent, uh, in fact, I think this is a yes. There you go. This is a McDonald's. Now, I'm I've been ordered by my doctor not to go here too often anymore. But um, McDonald's in the 70s, 80s, which is when I grew up, uh, looked very different. It looked uh, much more uh, hard furniture, plastic, white, uh, yellow, and red. Uh, that really scary clown. I was going to say, yeah, that's kind of. Yeah, <laughs> you, you don't you don't see that anymore here. Now it's mm. kind of moving a little bit more into a more stylish, a more comfortable looking, inviting you to sit down and actually enjoy your let, mm. let's call it coffee. Um, uh, linked, you know, get connected to the Wi-Fi, etc., as mm. as opposed to get your happy meal, eat it quickly, and leave. Mm. Uh, so here we're looking at brown colors, more slaty colors, uh, some graphic design, as you can see there in the background. And basically, uh, the then president, he's no longer president at uh, McDonald's in 2014. He said, if you feel comfortable in a restaurant, the food will taste better. And this is true for McDonald's mm. as a Michelin Michelin star restaurant. Right? Mm -hmm. And 
another hotel. This is the Now Hotel, is it called? It's a it's a Spanish chain of hotels uh, called NH. Um, and here they got involved with Karim Rashid himself, um, trying to create something different in a hotel as well. NH is quite well known for being quite uh, vanguard with with their with their design. It's very minimalist. It's one of those few hotels uh, that we go to on our travels in HP uh, that doesn't have carpet floors. It's all parquet floors in the rooms. Mm. It's all very min minimalistic, but you see elements of design everywhere, everywhere where you go. And this is uh, um, applications on, on uh, mirrors. So he tried to create um, mm. space with the mirrors, but then camouflage it a little bit. Uh, to make it nice, cool. nice. Quick question for you. Do these hotels, they use digital print. How frequently do they change the decor? Is it? Quick, well, frequently more. more, yes. In fact, it's called the TripAdvisor effect. TripAdvisor themselves call it the TripAdvisor effect. So thanks for that question. This is a good point. Um, hotels typically change their interiors every seven years. Mm. And that's now gone from five years, every five years. Mm. Uh, if you look on TripAdvisor or any other kind of Yelp or, or, or Google yeah. or whatever. I use TripAdvisor a lot, yeah. It's great. Exactly. So... The, the comments very often have to do with location, the decor, the, mm. the price, the service, etc. Mm. Um, and if they say something bad about the decor, that's that's an instant loss of points for that hotel, right? So yeah, yeah, it's important. And my last example, this one is: uh, if there's any musicians among you in the group, mm -hmm. this hotel is a complete uh, complete immersion wow. into music. This is uh, the Now Hotel in Berlin. They also call it the, Mus the Musique Hotel. Okay. Um, this is basically a hotel where you can go to and you can immerse in music, whether you want to record something, whether you want to present uh, uh, your latest CD, whether you want to throw a small party with a, with a live uh, um, performance, or simply just, just visit. Hmm. You actually have um, uh, the coolest thing about this hotel is the, the, the room service. If you want to play guitar, and you want to play on a Les, Les Paul Starburst uh, guitar on a Fender amp, they will send it to your room. Mm. So it's it's down to the details. It's completely uh, built around an experience. That's cool. As you can see there, there's, 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 there's decorative applications here on the wall as wallpaper. This stuff is obviously not printed, but uh, it's, it's all decorative elements. Very, very Karim Rashid, very colorful. There's a lot of pink. Mm. Um, but everything is, is is designed to make you feel like you're walking into a different place, right? And this 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 is what decoration can do. Digital, and also that that, be, that becomes a marketing selling point, doesn't it? That becomes a we need to go there just to experience it. It's completely. It's not, I mean, the yeah. next time I go to Berlin, <laughs> that's where I want to stay. Yeah, and you'll share it. You'll yeah. share it on social media, and it it gets, it gets attention. Hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Um, what you, you obviously talked about digital printing and wall coverings and so on but you haven't really pushed too much hp which is great but but equally mm -hmm. it's still um you have been a leader in the development field of digital wall coverings um obviously one of the key apart from the fact that the, the production is an important thing the ink is a key thing isn't it for wall coverings well for for, for latex <laughs> inks the, the but, leading the, the leading um uh argument has been mm. the fact that they're water-based inks so actually our our first move mm. uh, into interiors it has has been made easy because of the ink so the certifications that we have etc mm. the, the lack of smell mm. uh, and that kind of thing basically buys you a lot of points yeah. uh, to be talking to hotels children's uh, areas sleeping areas eating areas etc so yeah so uh, that's one thing from a regulation point of view it, it can't be you can't use solvent can you you can't use um well, it, it, it is used quite a lot. I, mean, I don't want to. I don't want to knock any 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 uh, technology. We all have our, our strong points and weak points, hmm. um, but we do get the odd uh, uh, comment and feedback that uh, hmm. once you experience one and the smell that comes with it versus the other with hmm. the lack of smell, uh, um, there's there's a key preference. Having said that, with uh, in, in the defense of uh, of solvent. Of course, you can you can you can you can degas or, or or get rid of the smell as well. It's not to say that it's not, it's not applicable at all. Mm. Um, like I said, each each has uh, a space. This is a, this is a huge market. It's a huge opportunity. Mm. So uh, I would actually promote the whole 
mm. of the of the print uh, yeah. print um, okay. technologies. Okay, that's good to, to go after it. Good mm. answer. Really, th th thanks, um, Terry. And, and Vincent's holding something up. Do you want to say something, Vincent? Because I'll unmute you. So, Vincent, yes. I'm trying to have this uh, conversation with Robin. We can oh, yeah, see him, but it, the, it's not moving. So he, um, I sent him a uh, WhatsApp. He said, if there's any question for me, yeah. just add me, and, and, and I can, uh, okay. like, give you... Uh, so if anybody has any questions for Robin he later could, on... And... He could dial in. There is a dial-in option he could, if he wanted to, but that's... Yeah, but uh, anyway. the connection is really, uh, really, really bad. bad so. Okay. Thank Sorry you. Thank you, Leo, though. Thank, th thank him for trying, and um, to enjoy, enjoy the whiskey over the weekend. And we'll, and we'll get back, we'll get back to we'll get back I'll give to him that. yeah 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 and and um okay brilliant um thanks for that Terry um I'm going to now move swiftly on to to John who's been very patient there with um w with waiting for his turn um I'm going to hand over the presentation to John and John John's somebody I've known for a few years now and initially through our sister show which is um imprint and Industrial, imp industrial inkjet have <coughs> developed a stronger reputation for innovation in the field of um, in industrial inkjet. Funny enough, great name for a company. When I first met, I was a great name for a company. You've got, you've got it there, nailed. Um, so, in various different um, industries, John's worked over the years. But I'll let you introduce yourself because obviously you've um, developed something interesting now, technology-wise, for digital wallpaper. Have you got, um, have you got the presentation? through yet John? I've, I've got, I think it's up if you can't see it with a problem I think so it's up on my screen. It's up on your screen right okay. Can you everybody else see it? Not yet it's probably building Not up. Not yet okay. It okay, sometimes it sometimes takes a while I'll um what I'll do is I'll pull it I'll pull it back to me and then I'll send it again Show my screen, uh, and then I'll send it back again. It's saying uh, count error, Marcus. Yeah. Do and you that... want me to drop out and try and come back in again? No, no, you're, you're right. It should come back to you now, because it's saying to me you're the presenter. Okay, can you see my screen? As of yet, no, oddly. Um, do you want me to try logging out and logging in again? Uh, I don't know if it's, it's you or the system. Yeah, maybe, maybe if you don't mind, and we can perhaps um, have, have a chat around, maybe start All talking right. some, of, some of the questions. Um, okay, S start the questions, I'll log out and I'll come back in. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, all right, so I'll come back to me now. Obviously, we did get, like I said earlier, we we got a bunch of questions, which is really good, from um, various people um, who are probably online now. So I'll just take back the uh, presentation and start. And the market size one we've we've dealt with. Um, I've got a lot of things on my screen. Um, Marcus, can I make a comment? Yeah, you can do. Please do. Uh, you're mentioning the market size of of uh, of, uh, of well covering specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some numbers to indicate that the market size in rolls, and when we talk about euro rolls, they're basically mm -hmm. 53 um, centimeters wide and 10 meters long. That's basically the size of a of a euro standard roll, which is 50 uh, 5.3 square meters basically. So the right. market size for that. There are many, many numbers floating around, but from mm. the Wall Covering Association, we're hearing that's about 700 million rolls worldwide. Yeah. Um, which are basically driven by China and Russia, the two biggest markets. Mm. China just, just overtook Russia this last year. I saw that. Um, yeah. Um, many, many, many Chinese uh, manufacturers there. Mm -hmm. uh, also digital. Digital basically, depending on what numbers you look at, oscillates between 2%, 3%, or up to 5%, but no more than 5%. But of course, as you can imagine, it's growing very, very fast um, because many more players... Basically, what's happened with the digital is it's made... Very often, uh, when technology shake, shakes up a market, it's basically the, the least likely competitor becomes the biggest competitor for 
the, the, the sector, which is what well, covering manufacturers now have a new competitor, which is a, a print shop, a PSP, mm. who normally makes signage or whatever, has decided to make wallpaper because they can, simply. It's not quite as simple as for a printing company to jump into wallpaper, is it? It's, I mean, I know the technology is no. familiar, but it's still a challenge, isn't it, in terms of managing the material and... And so yeah, I mean, wall covering, as we're, as we're finding out ourselves, and, 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 and I'm, I'm sure most of our competitors are finding out as well, is uh, if it's installed badly, you've lost the customer. So uh, installation is very important, the way it's lined up, um, the colors need to match from one panel to the, to the other, etc. So there's many, many um, uh, pebbles um, uh, on the way, which, which, which can, can, can be a nuisance. Um, you need to find a good installer if you want to install it properly, or mm. if you're handy uh, yourself, you can do it. But it's uh, it, it's it's a tricky one. If you if you look at other applications, there are other ones that are much easier for for the for the end customer to to install. And so so that's an interesting point. They actually, it does require, and also you don't know the market, so you don't have any customers. So you've got to go and find these designers. You've got to go and so it's, so it requires a different tact a different approach doesn't it it's not simple as with all due respect printing graphics and printing wallpaper is a, a different discipline and the demands perhaps from the end customer are, are much much higher i would imagine yes yeah, so, as, as as rachel said earlier as well it's, it's the it's got to be the right design what makes it a good design well it's got to be mm -hmm. uh, something something someone likes of course um yeah. there are trends that you can follow uh, color wise or graphic wise etc um, it's if you just think about about uh, fashion, mm -hmm. home fashion follows fashion typically yeah. uh, in terms of trends. This is about a year lag between one and the other. But it's also trying to buy a, a shirt online. If you can't feel it, it's very very difficult to mm. or, or or try it on. Yeah, it's very difficult to buy it, right? No, it uh, it's just it's the same with with this. So very often when we talk to our customers who have not done wallpaper before, so well you do wallpaper, and very often I cringe when I hear this is. Uh, Yes, we have some great vinyls, and hmm. a wallpaper on vinyl is is flat. It's shiny. It it, it wallpaper needs to be something not as colorful. It actually doesn't need to shout as much. Sorry, John's back. I don't want to take on. Okay, now that's no. Thanks for jumping in there. That was interesting. That was a good little a little, little session there. So I'm going to try and um, try again and, and hand over to John. Um, but the opportunity, the point that you're making there, Terry, also is there's an economic advantage for printers to try at least to this market because principally they're going to make more money, aren't they, than graphics, let's be honest. Per square if meter. someone wants something because of a design, mm. they're very often willing to pay a little bit more for it. Yeah, Definitely. Okay. Cool. John, you've um, persisted. Th thankfully, you, we've managed to get you and your presentation going there now. And I, uh, over to you. I'll let you just go for it. Okay, so you can see my screen now? We can. Okay, I'll go through this fairly quickly. So, um, yeah, my name is John Corral. I've been working in inkjet in for something north of 30 years now. And our company is Industrial Inkjet Limited. Um, we, we're basically the distributor for Konicum and Alt Inkjet printheads, but we also build inkjet systems, inkjet printing systems. Um, just a bit of background, we've worked in a lot of different markets, different areas over the years. So security, pharma, product decoration. Taking examples, this is direct to, to tube or direct to product. These are systems we've worked on, systems we've helped our customers develop. This is all uh, printing to tubes. These are our machines, the silver boxes with the IIJ written on um, are the machines we build and sell. These are typical customers printing um, labels or, or uh, packaging various places around the world. So typical markets for us are labels, security, pharmaceuticals. Uh, the packages you can see are printed in Australia by a customer there. And then you've got pharmaceutical blister pack picture. And we, we make these machines here in UK. We install them worldwide. We service and support them worldwide. Anyway, we're, we're talking about wall covering here. So how we got involved was two years ago, uh, Konica Minolta asked us to help do some market research. And the goal was actually high pressure laminates. They were interested in, um, 
if you like, kitchen worktop, fake wood. But as we were helping them with it, we started to get interested in wallpaper. We thought wallpaper might be a more interesting market for digital than, um, than the high pressure laminate market. Our goal originally was um, mass production. We wanted to produce a digital printer that ran at high volume mass production speeds. So where are we? We've been about two years of work now. What we found very early was the normal inks we use, which were the majority were, were UV cured, simply weren't acceptable. There's a couple of high volume wallpaper producers who have been very, very helpful to us. And we made print samples, we took them to show them and they went really nice print quality. It's not wallpaper. It doesn't look like wallpaper, it doesn't feel like wallpaper. And in general, it was glossy, it just looked too glossy, too shiny, which made it cold. So appearance was very important. And we realized right at the start, we didn't, two years ago, we had no solution. We didn't have an ink that looked like wallpaper. We also found there's a lot of regulatory requirements. Um, there's wash tests, scrub tests, there's a lot of EU regulations you've got to comply with. And then finally, we, we looked at the economics and we realized that it's quite possible to produce digital wallpaper at mass production pricing, but you need a, a serious cost model. You need to know exactly where your costs are going, what, what's costing compared to conventional printing. So we've done an awful lot of work on that. We finally, we seem to be there. The ink now looks like wallpaper. We meet the scrub rub and wash tests. We discovered quite early, talking to a lot of mass production people, um, it's not just paper, it's paper, it's non-woven, it's PVC. I think we ended up with a list of 42 different media that we needed to print on. And we also realized that we had to print on textured or pre-embossed material, or sometimes just furry material, material that's not, it's not just a flat sheet or a flat layer, it's got a texture to it. And we've got to throw the ink down into the into the texture. We're at the stage now where we've started doing customer demonstrations quite, re quite uh, recently. Speed is a bit of a problem. Mass production is generally 60 to 70 meters per minute. We're at about 30 to 40 meters per minute with the current, uh, the current inks. We also realize that software is going to be very important for this product. So uh, when we started the project, we thought it was just mass production, but actually the mural wall guys are very interested in our product. But they expect to be able to stream, uh, you know, the mural images all day long, non-stop, without any gaps in the print, without any downtime. You need to be able to set up a, a day's production and just hit print. And they're also familiar with different rips, maybe a color gate. So we, we've got to integrate those. So if I try and make it run, there's a video of our demo system running. Hopefully you can see that. Mm -hmm. So the inkjet units on the left, just in front of my colleague Vina, you've got a big dryer with a chimney on top of it, and there's the wallpaper printing. Yeah, and it's streaming obviously slower than, in, in, in reality, it's a lot quicker than that. Um, okay, uh, so uh, maybe on, you, my, you can... on my, which I'm sure everyone else is seeing as well, but yeah, you, you can you get a good idea of it. Yeah. Great. Okay, so. It looks great. Two and, years work, but we think we're there. Yeah. And and so it's, it's pretty quick and the ink is, what kind of ink is it? Well, we went through various UV inks, but again, it was it didn't look like wallpaper. Hmm. Uh, we then went through some normal water-based inks, and we've ended up with, I think you call it a polymeric water-based. So it's a water-based ink that hmm. is actually heat cured. You're not really drying it. You're, you're fixing the pigment with heat. Right. Okay. And and like you said, there's two there's two sort of industries. There's the mass industry, which this could work within, but also the mural one. Um, yeah. And there's, there's a cool thing you can do with the embossing as well, isn't there, that with this system? Yeah, so the um, one of the things that came out is 
um, the mass production guys explained to us that printing on embossed is expensive for them because they make up the printing plates and the embossing plates, and if they don't line up, they've got to re remake them. Mm. With the digital, we can obviously shrink or grow the digital image more or less instantly. And in fact, we can close the loop. We can have a camera ensuring that uh, the print's lining up with the pre-emboss and constantly changing the image to match. Interesting. And you found that with some of your research that generally speaking, demand for long-run analog wallpaper printing is actually in decline, isn't it? Well, we joined the IGI Wallpaper um, mm. Association. And, you know, if you go to their annual conferences, they'll tell you that. It's been going downhill, I think, since something like 2006. It's in gen gentle mm. decline the whole time. Yeah, and so the digital market is bucking that trend, obviously, in a different way. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Brilliant. Well, best of luck with that. I think, it's like you said, you've had a huge amount of interest in it, so we look forward to seeing how that how that develops. Um, so I'll, t I'll, I'll take now back the um, the screen and hopefully we can just flip into some of the final um, the final questions that please panel jump in when anyone catches you or anything I know the answer to that or I want to say something please do. So the f what are the main printing technologies for digital wallpaper today? Obviously we've been mainly talking about inkjet but is that the only technology there is other technologies digital for wallpaper isn't there well we we see zycon which is telling them that's yeah. quite significant i think yeah that's quite a significant player in the industry isn't it so that's a um a different technology but still digital what are the most popular substrates for that's a good one we don't really talk too much obviously the, the material is really important and you said john you've got 42 <coughs> different materials you're expected to print on um what are the most popular substrates for digital wall decor? Um, Terry, I mean, you obviously have, I know, good uh, partnerships with material companies. Do you, or, or, or Vincent, what would you say are the most popular? Definitely non-woven, I would say. Um, Non-woven is non -woven. Uh, more economical, generally speaking. Uh, it has very good dimensional stability. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, it doesn't skew and then, and, and, and print or grow whatever as much um, light uh, and easy to apply and and, and take o take off the wall um, but I mean there's, there's there's tons of I mean for me the most important part is definitely the design the second most important thing is media uh, mm. way before the machines mm. it's got to be media so yeah for me it's a big uh, big aspect very important aspect I saw I saw Alstrom was showing something uh, an event last week where you literally and you, this is probably normal, but I thought it was very, I don't know if it is normal, but it, brilliant because you literally peel, put on and peel off really quickly this kind of sense that you can just, you know, I remember in, back in the 80s trying to help my parents peel off newspaper, yeah. peel off all papers, you know what I mean, with that awful, what was that that stuff Steam. that had bits in it? Yeah, yeah. And it was like, oh my God, it was awful. But yeah, so they have this sort of really easy system now, which just seems to be a dream. I mean, is that is that a new thing or? Yeah. It's, I think they introduced it two years ago. Rachel, sorry, you wanted to say something? Oh, no, no, I, I was just going to say from my perspective um, here in the U.S., uh, I, I don't, non-woven, yes, definitely is, is here, but I don't think as much. I see a lot more uh, PVC, a lot more uh, textures. We kind of, I think we get a little flashy, so I see like a lot of mylars and pearls and different kind of uh, special finishes. So um, a lot of the PVC, mm. um, still non-woven. Um, I even saw... I, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if anybody knows, but I even saw that um, Sill came out with a uh, dye sublimation uh, non-woven textile. I think it was. What, yeah. I, think, I thought it was a wall covering. Was it a textile? Hmm. Oh, I thought so. Yeah. It was a wall covering, yeah. But we also, um, there's a lot of the repositionable fabrics. Hmm. Um, so that's quite popular here as well. Um, so a big market is open in the U.S. then? Yes. Yeah, it's growing fast. Very quickly. Um, Just like we said earlier, not as much as Europe, but yeah, it's growing. So anyway, go ahead. And again, you mentioned collaboration. Um, I know there's a lot of collaboration between material producers and ink companies and, you know, in terms of creating the right um, material that can do perhaps the job for digital that isn't really possible. Do you know what I mean? In terms of textures and so on and embossing and so on. So it's quite, quite a... Uh, I've got a little example. I don't know if you see this book here. Yeah. Uh, 
you're kind of you're kind of going there. A bit. Yeah. So here you can see, by the way, all the, see the interior here on the side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then all the materials on which we can print here mm -hmm. next next to it. So you'll see anything from vinyls to wallpapers to uh, self adhesives, yeah. um, ba uh, backlits, etc. So it's it's a very very important aspect for me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, very important mm -hmm. substrate. Substrates. Questions: In future, will inks be latex, UV, or water based? Is that is that an easy one to answer, or perhaps all of them? I don't know. What do you think? Well, I'm. Um, Sorry, I, I never tried the UV because we simply couldn't make it look like wallpaper. We couldn't get it matte mm. enough. Uh -huh. So I, I, it, it, one of the questions was, you know, which is best for the regulatory, the wash and scrub, and, that, and obviously UV is great at it, but mm. I, if it won't be accepted by the customer, it's not going to fly. That's my right. take on it. So you think, you think latex and water-based? Um, and what water base we struggle to get the color density right um, so, so I, you, it's not latex but the one we've got which is you know yeah. polymeric water base yeah, that gave you the color density well, is that what the term you would use polymeric water based yeah okay fine so that's the answer latex or polymeric water based um what are the advantages and disadvantages is that, is, that a, oh. is that a long, uh, yeah, I, I guess, if anyone wants to answer that. Um. I think in commercial spaces, I mean, I think the advantages of the latex is the eco, you know, attributes, but um, a lot to do with uh, sustainability, and that's a huge movement here, and they're, they're pushing that quite a bit. So when it comes to commercial specification and working with designers or um, project managers and architects uh, to get a product uh, or yourself, you know, specced into a job. Um, I think that there's so many key aspects of latex that's really helping kind of people get specced in into that market. You know, going from going from digital, going into that space. You know, competing with the analog. Okay, so. but presumably the polymeric water base is has the similar credentials, John. I would imagine. Yeah. 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 Cool. I think so. Thanks for that. Um, what are the current market and this may be difficult to answer i don't know if we have this um uh, you know in terms of market um let's just get rid of something i can't even see the question on my screen what's the current market cost per square foot in the us for latex digital on 180 it's very specific but somebody asked the question i don't know if the top of your head terry you could answer that or we what we could do is get back to this individual with the answer if you like mm. Yeah. yeah, I think I think here really as opposed to this is not this is whoever asked this question comes from the signage industry. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so this is a typical signage question, cost per square meter. If you come from the wall covering world or the design world, you'd look at what a, a role is being sold for hmm. uh, and you'd, you'd ask what the design is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I've seen designs. Um, Vincent, you know them, another Dutch brand. They don't print on latex, unfortunately. Um, NLXL. Right, mm -hmm. they uh, they managed to sell a roll of wallpaper for 250 euros. I'm sure they don't spell, send sell thousands of them a day, but mm -hmm. whatever they sell is probably going to be pretty pretty uh, uh, profitable. Yeah. Timorous Beastie is another one from Scotland. Uh, there's so many brands mm -hmm. um, that are managing to to sell a design mm -hmm. uh, for for 250, uh, 100, 150 euros per per, per roll. The further or the, the closer you get to mass market retail, like your B&Qs in the UK, like your home depots in the US, uh, there you're going to look at a roll costing between 15 and at most 30 euros, at most. It's really got to be a design that, 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 that holds itself well in a, in, a, in a retail environment like that, like a, like a do-it-yourself retail. If you go to specialist stores, you find everything. But basically, it's between, you know, let's say 10 euros per roll up to uh, as much as 200. Okay, that's good. Answer. I, I, th I think if, if the question is the market price for, for the roll, okay. If you're mm -hmm. talking about ink cost, um, dark image, something like this, mm -hmm. it's probably 50 to 70 pence a square meter for the ink. Square meter, not square foot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we covered substrates, so I guess we've already answered that, have we? 
preferred, preferred substrates for such products? I think we kind of answered that. Yeah, what we get more from the designers more and more is like new exclusive substrates, like metallic uh -huh. ones. Like uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think Rachel mentioned it before. It's like this felt. The designers, they have the need to have, have some tactility with it. They have to, uh, it has to have a nice, warm, soft touch and feel. And if you watch all the, the trend events, they all talk about all the hardness that's in the world that, well, it's like translated to the products that you use in indoor and fashion. So you need like softer materials as well, or really shiny, flashy uh, materials, a lot of metallics, things like that. Mm. That's what we see more often in, the, in our world. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So new, new sub demand for new substrate development there coming from the yeah. design community. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, and the final question, I probably won't, I'll probably perhaps ask you to answer this, Vincent, offline because you know obviously somebody's answer, asked for some a recommendation of a, a dutch company in the amsterdam area um i know one you you probably know a few in fact no, yeah. i know a lot i know a lot i know a lot yeah 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 <laughs> so 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 what i'll do is um i'll uh I'll, I'll email you that and we can email the person who's asked that question Thanks. before before we finish because we've well gone well over the hour has anyone got anything sort of final comments they want to make or mm. um obviously the question is is wall coverings the next digital print revolution? And what does the panel think? Do you think one we're of in a state of revolution here? Are we in a state of revolution? One of the revolutions is, and I want to give that credit to Mr. Robin Sprong, who's not here, but what he said when we spoke last week with this same panel is like, what he really thinks is great, and I totally agree, is that his design can add up in um, uh, Australia Mm. to South America, to um, mm. the north, to the south, everywhere. So um, um, that's a new thing. You can come and get Definitely. everywhere with the design. Definitely. And it's, ena it's enabling um, designers to express themselves and build a business without having to go through the traditional routes, which potentially could be um, really difficult for some people to, to do. And actually, it's enabling a new business, isn't it? Um, any well, other? If you want to do like a, an office if you want to decorate an office, let's call it decorate. If you want to create like a visual experience in an office and you want to have it themed in a South African way, hmm. you can just pick up the phone, for example, and go to a designer in South Africa mm -hmm. um, when you want to work with Robin Sprung. Next day, you can maybe already have the first files in your inbox. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's pretty cool. It's quite yeah, that's pretty revolutionary. And, Anybody Robin Sprung is an, is an eight man business. In Cape Absolutely. Town, isn't it? And yeah. mm. they are managing to play globally. So basically, what's happened in the music industry with uh, with online, with streaming, and all that kind of stuff in the, in the book editing business, the same thing happened. So basically, we throw technology in there, which puts design in this case in the hands of many or, or access yeah. to, to to doing something with it. That's the revolution, essentially. I mean, it's it's yeah. it's really this 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 joining the dots of of design and, and application. Mm. And and really, it's the op it's an opportunity now, isn't it? It's kind of in that growth phase, but quite still early enough for people to get involved and really grow something special. I think that's the sense I have that we're still in that revolutionary early phase. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Anybody else like to finish off uh, before we sign off? Are we all done? Um, um, I just have one comment. I think okay. that um, this is great that we're all together. And I think, um, you know, as people in the industry and how we're connecting with more, it's, I don't know, I feel like it's, I have a sense of responsibility to promote this. So I think that the more of us are talking about this, you know, the more we can uh, push this revolution. So mm -hmm. um, I just think it's really important that we all just keep talking about it and connecting with people. Definitely. Mm -hmm. totally, agree. totally agree. Excellent. Listen, thank you, everybody. I thought you've done a great job. And we had a little, challenge with the technology as usual but um i think we got through it and it, it, was, it was great and everybody stayed online for us um so thanks so much to the panel and to every delegate that's attended um we'll make available the um recording and uh all i need to say now is have, have wonderful weekends and by all means join us next year for pure digital in amsterdam Thanks very much. Thanks very much for having us, Marcus. No worries. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. See you soon. Thank you. Bye -bye. See you guys. Bye-bye.